And so I'm live, like I promised, a little bit after 11. Hey, man, this office is a mess. You know, I was scurrying around trying to get this class to you guys. Now, my last one, the mic wasn't working. So somebody let me know if the mic is working okay. Um, if it's not, then, uh, uh, you know, I'll fix the mic. But I don't want to be going on here uh, doing an hour, half-hour show, a 20-minute show. My mic ain't working. So somebody tell me, I'm looking at the feed now. Is the, is my mic working okay? Give me a yes, no, give me a thumbs up, a, a smiley face or something. All right, cool. All right, so listen. Um, and we're going to go through this real quick. We're going to talk about why it is. We all saw the press conference. Now they're, they're charging this guy with second-degree murder in Minnesota. And a lot of people, you know, so you hear Keith Ellison, or, you know, he used to be. This is some bullshit, and I'm going to tell you why. What they're saying is, and here's first degree murder. They're saying it doesn't mount to premeditation, right? And so look at first degree murder in Minnesota, which carries a mandatory life sentence if convicted. Whoever does any of the following is guilty of murder in the first degree and shall be sentenced to imprisonment for life. For life. Whoever does what? Causes the death of a human being, Mr. Floyd was a human being, with premeditation and with intent to affect the death of the person or another. Now, here's, here's where they're fooling you. And this is why I like to bring you to law wrong. This is why I like to bring you to law wrong. Because I tried these, you know, and they, hey, look, for y'all don't know, don't know me, uh, somebody in Cincinnati, love I tried these murder cases as a defense lawyer for years. And I was, and, and I won most of them. Um, and so I've had cases with under similar statutes in Ohio, just like in um, Minnesota where my client was charged with first degree murder. So how, so what does it take to premeditate with intent? And most people think, you know, if you go back, some of y'all don't know what the role run of Wiley e. Coyote, you know, my students here at the law school, they like, you know, I say, man, y'all know Wiley e. Coyote, like, who is that, man? Is that SpongeBob? No, it ain't SpongeBob. Man, Wiley e. Coyote used to always try to catch the role run, and he'd be scheming and planning and stuff like that, then he'd end up fucking, he end up messing stuff up. I'm trying not to curse. It's been a hell of a morning. So anyway, you don't need that type of plan. See, a lot, you know, and, and so all you need, in order to premeditate murder in, with intent to kill, it could just take seconds. It can't happen at the same time, right? So you can't all of a sudden kill somebody and then be charged with first-degree murder. So how long does it take to what, Lawson, premeditate with intent? Well, that, you know, that, that comes... They call that a question of fact, and a jury can sit there and determine, but a judge will tell a jury. It can, it can just be moments, or it could be minutes. It could be seconds, but there has to be something, right, to where a person can uh, deliberate before they kill. Now, this is why what they're telling y'all is some bullshit, and I'm telling y'all now. I know y'all think, well, I lost some way, you know. Like I told you, I, mean, I tried these cases. So, and I teach it. Right, and I, hey, hey, so hey, I ain't gonna come on here and tell y'all. I want y'all to understand the law, so so that when when you hear Keith Ellison and them, see what they're doing is they playing it safe. When 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 the grand jury indicts, they can indict for first degree murder, they can indict you for second degree murder, and they can indict you for manslaughter, all in the same indictment for all one murder. And what happened is that the jury, when when the, when the case is argued, the evidence presented and closing arguments are John, done, the judge will instruct that jury. You, the defendant's charged with first-degree murder, and then they'll, right, and the defendant's charged with second-degree murder and manslaughter. If you find the defendant did not commit first-degree murder and find him not guilty, then you have to go see if he committed second-degree murder. If you find the defendant didn't commit second-degree murder, then you have to go down and see if he committed manslaughter. See, that's how the shit runs when it's me or you. See, if me or you outside choking the shit out of somebody and people are saying, hey, stop, and then other people are saying, hey, you know what, uh, Lawson, man, you're choking him and he's out of breath and you stay on my neck for, and I stay on your neck for three more minutes and it's on videotape and I'm looking at the camera like I don't give a shit, that's intent. You say, okay, Lawson, the attorney general and all them, they know what they're talking about. You don't know what... Well, even Mr. Floyd's family said, no, we believe it's first-degree murder, the lawyers for them. But I'm going to tell you why, because I got the facts right here. The same facts that they're looking at, right? and remember in the probable cause? Is, is, all right, so we're going to look at the facts of the case. 
All right, now, why is it, Lawson, that you think you can convict Chauvin of first-degree murder? All right, so it, remember, they were in body cams. Y'all haven't seen, they have not released the audio from the body cam, but they were in body cams. And when they're on top of it, when they're on top of Mr. Floyd, when he's in the prone position, we're going to get to the, mem uh, I'm going to jump real quick. So y'all remember now, after the autopsy, the second autopsy that said that it was the uh, uh, positional fixation, the officers, you know, pushing down on him and putting a knee on the neck was the proximate cause of the death, right? That was Dr. Biden, uh, like I, some of you, if you haven't looked at my videos before, but I used to use Dr. Biden as an expert when I did these cases uh, with unarmed, um, when an unarmed black man got killed in Cincinnati. And I told you on that last video, before Dr. Biden came on, he was going to be able to tie it together and show um, that, that, you know, they killed him as opposed to the heart conditions and stuff like that. But I'm going to get into the autopsy because then after Dr. Biden said that, you know what, they committed murder. In other words, they are the reasons why Mr. Floyd died, the officers. Then the coroner from Minnesota, the same day, leaked out to TMZ and other news media talking about Mr. Floyd had fentanyl in his system and meth. And that's what contributed to his death, right? And so again, so even though the coroner in Minnesota says it's a homicide, it doesn't mean that these individuals, the officers are the uh, legal reason for the homicide. It just says he died of a homicide. You follow what I'm saying? So don't, the reason why we know that the, the medical coroner is not on the side of, of the Floyd family is because why would they leak out that Mr. Floyd had meth and, and uh, fentanyl in his system right after Dr. Biden said, hey, we're telling you, man, that the cops is the reason why this man died. So anyway, let me get back to it before uh, I get off point, because y'all know how I get. So listen, so Lawson, how, how you going to prove first degree murder? What do you have to argue? Here's what you got to show, man. Now, so here are the facts. The defendant, Mr. Floyd, was pulled out of the passenger side of the squad car at 819, and Mr. Floyd went to the ground. I'm reading from the police report that they charged uh, the murder in Chauvin with. Mr. Floyd went down to the ground, still handcuffed. Officer Kuhn held Mr. Floyd's back. Man, I wish I had my pictures of them. Held, held Mr. Floyd's back and Lane held the legs. The defendant, Chauvin, placed his knee in the area of Mr. Floyd's head and neck. Mr. Floyd said, I can't breathe multiple times and repeatedly said, Mama, and please as well. The defendant and the other two officers stayed in that position. So he's telling you, I can't breathe. He's telling you, he's calling for his mother. The officer said, you're talking fine to Mr. Floyd as he continued to move back and forth. Lane asked, should we roll him on his side? Right? Lane is asking, see, look, when you, again, go look at my other, other ones. When, and I'm going to turn this a little bit over here. Hey, so listen, Lane says to him, to Chauvin, hey, man, shouldn't we turn him? Now we got him handcuffed. Shouldn't we turn him over? And 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 and, and, and Chauvin says, no, man, we're going to leave him right where he is. And then Lane tells him, no, but I'm concerned about excited delirium. In other words, they know they can, when you put somebody in that prone position and you have them handcuffed and you got pressure on their diaphragm, it can cause death. It's called a positional fixation. Go look at Eric Garner, I Can't Breathe. Those in Cincinnati, Nathaniel Jones, the case I had in 2004, Daryl Price in 1994 or 1995, right? But I, I did those cases with positional fixation, so I'm telling you. Right? So when you put them down like that, you're supposed to, once you get them handcuffed, you turn them over. And so Lane is telling Chauvin, which means what? They are aware that if you put somebody down here, there's a risk we could kill them. And so Lane tells him, look, Chauvin, man, I'm, I'm concerned about excited delirium. Chauvin said, we're going to leave him just where he at. I ain't turning him over. He didn't say, I ain't turning him over. I'm going to be fair to him. He just said, we're going to leave him where he at. And I'm going to leave my knee on his neck is what he did. So then six minutes goes by. And so then uh, Kuhn, who's in the middle, holding down the back of Mr. Floyd, while Lane, st while Chauvin still has his knee in the back of Mr. Floyd's neck, takes the pulse of Mr. Floyd and says to him, "He's not breathing. He ain't got no pulse, and he ain't breathing." And then that, then then Chauvin looks in the camera and continues to keep his knee on the back of that man's neck for two minutes and fifty three seconds. Now, I'm going to turn this back so y'all can see this shit one more time. Now I'm going to start cussing. Now, look here. When, you, when, when we are telling you, when, 
look, let me make the closing argument. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you, you saw the videotape. You heard the people in the audience yelling, get off of him, he's dying. You saw the defendant, Chauvin, with his knee on the back of that man's neck, his hands in his pocket, and he's staring in, in the face of the camera like, I don't give a fuck. And he wants to tell you and his lawyer going to stand up here and tell you that somehow he did not premeditate with intent to cause the death of another person. They tell him he's out of breath and he ain't got no pulse. Does he get up and try to help him? No. What does he do? He thinks about it and keeps his knee on his neck. What do you mean premeditation? So he knows. He knows. They tell him if we don't get him over, uh, uh, Lane tells him. Right when, when, when the man said he can't breathe, should we turn him over? We got him handcuffed. He's secure. He ain't resisting. Should we turn him over? No, we're going to leave him to where he is. That's what the defendant told you. Now they want to come in here talking about, well, it ain't first degree murder where the man can serve life in prison. What they want to come talk about now is we can't prove intent. Let me tell y'all something, man. Look at this statute. Cause of the death of another with premeditation with intent. Do you really think any murderer is going to tell you, I plan to kill you, and that's the evidence that's going to come in? Do you really think there's evidence that can get to a back of a, of, of a murderer's mind? In other words, that you got to bring some mind reader in court, and if the mind reader doesn't come in court to show you what the intent was that was in the defendant's mind, that you can never prove this case? You prove premeditated intent, premeditation and intent by the person's actions. That's called circumstantial evidence. Yeah, circumstantial evidence, right? So we look at the circumstantial evidence in this case to determine what the defendant's intent is, right? In other words, don't believe what I say. Watch what I do. If I'm telling you, right, that I'm going to give you love taps and I'm smacking you in the head with my fist as hard as I can, but these are love taps, all right, what I'm saying and what I'm doing is two different things. What does the evidence show he was doing? What does the evidence show his intent? Yeah, how do we know that? Because they fucking, they told him. Not just his officers on, right? He said, I'm concerned. He said, I don't care. We're going to leave him the way he is. That's the, right? So then six minutes later, they take his pulse. He ain't got no pulse. He ain't breathing. Should we turn him over now? They leave him the way he is. With his knee on the back of his neck. And look, and if you want to see his intent, y'all go back and look at that. And watch the camera and watch his face. See, that's what everybody's in uproar. That's what I'm in uproar about. Because, see, that's the face that was on the man that came and took Emmett Till from his granddaddy's house and lynched him. That's the face of the white mob that took the Scarborough boys from that train when they were falsely accused of raping them white girls and beat them and all that. See, that's the face that we've been seeing when, when the slave master want to come and take uh, a man's wife and rape her. That's the face. Go look at his face. Go look at his face. Look at his face. That's the face. That we see every fucking day, man. I'm telling you. Hey, so when we tell you Keith Ellison, when you come on here on CNN and uh, telling me uh, you as a defense lawyer and you know that this is the appropriate, you full of shit. Fuck. You full of shit. I done had clients charged with less. This is the appropriate. Okay, well, look, why are not charging with first degree murder? Let the jury determine that. If they don't think he committed first degree murder after all the evidence, and I'm, you know, I, hey, this is what's come out y'all report. And this ain't even all the evidence yet. Now they say, so, it's, and, and, right? And and I, I see the old chief on here, uh, Brother Ernie. He knows well, man, yeah, he, he'll tell you. Man, he just charged somebody with first degree murder on this evidence, period. If it was me or you, it'll happen. You ain't got to, this, you ain't got to be, do you really think somebody's going to say, well, how, how would you ever prove this intent? Unless somebody say, okay, in order to charge somebody with first degree murder, we need to get somebody go to Vegas and fly one of them mind readers up here. Yeah, uh, uh, former chief of police from Lincoln Heights is on there. Watch, watch what he's saying on, on the screen. He, hey, I'm telling you, I ain't talking no shit. I'm telling y'all the truth. 
And then they want to say, hey, here's why I'm mad. Because, see, he could get, when you can get up to 40 years. Look, let me show you how some how this is played. Damn it. Bear with me, y'all. So, so look, so, so hit murder in the second degree. Whoever does any of the following is guilty of murder in the second. So that's what they got in charge with. Maybe he says to imprisonment for not more than 40 years. So anyway, he can get from zero up to 40 years. See, on first degree murder, you take your ass to prison and, and you come out in a box. What about, what about early? You come out in a box. Y'all seen life with Eddie Murphy and then, hey, man, that's life in prison. <laughs> Shit. All right. Causes the death of a human being with intent to affect the death of that person, but without premeditation. And again, don't listen to me now. Premeditation can be just, you can premeditate somebody's murder just like that. Somebody make you mad or you know what, you're sitting there like, I done had enough of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up this knife and go stab him in the neck. That's premeditation. And then you go do it. How many seconds did that take? This month, I'm going to pick up this knife and go stab his ass in the neck. Right, I'm going to walk right, right? That's premeditation. And a jury can determine that. For what? First degree murder. Now, so now here, he can get anywhere, you know, between, no, it's probably going to be a minimum sentence, maybe 10 years up to 40. I'm not sure. But here, here this is right out the statute. And all it says is uh, second degree may be sentenced to imprisonment for not more than 40 years. Let's get back to it. Second degree murder. So now the other ones are charged with second degree murder and aiding and abetting second degree murder and punishable by up to 40 years in prison. Manslaughter. And see, they should be charged with second degree, I mean, first degree murder and aiding and abetting first degree murder. Right? Because that's what he did. Then they all then they all get a sentence to life in prison. And I see some old bailiffs on here. Some and some of y'all old bailiffs, Cliff, you know as well as I know, man. You done seen first degree murder cases charged uh, on less than on on less evidence than this. And at least the jury gets a determination on how they want to roll it. So don't fall for that. Now I want to get into, now I told y'all, and, and my, when I was telling y'all about positional asphyxiation, having done these cases, uh, what they wait on is a toxicology report. And then if anybody, if the, if the person had any amount of drugs in them, they're going to say that's the excited delirium. That's what generated the heart attack. And so we can't show Beyond a reasonable doubt. Do I have that up here? Yeah, I, yeah, I did that much for y'all. So, so this is this is the coroner's report. I know y'all can't read it, but I want y'all to know I got it. So I. Ain't. But here it says um, other significant conditions, and I can't pronounce this: arterial sclerotic, whatever, hypertensive heart disease. This is Mr. Floyd's report, right? Fentanyl intoxication, recent meth use. Okay, now I told y'all that was coming before it came out. Y'all gonna learn that y'all getting shit for free and it's gold. I, and I'm giving y'all gold. So now what happens? So now, now, now what happens, the defense lawyer comes in, he argues. Right? He gets his own expert, like Dr. Biden, um, what I used to use in Cincinnati, and, and what uh, the Floyd, Dr. Biden, the medical expert, comes in and says, that it was the position that the police had had him in, the knee on the neck, which is what generated the, the lack of flow of air to the brain, which caused him to pass out and which generates the heart attack, right? The heart failure. So they're, they're, the, they're the cause of the death. The other, the other lawyer's gonna come in and say that, that, um, that he, would, he would have died like that anyway, just from the fact that, that we were trying to uh, arrest him. And so we're not the, uh, the cause of his death. So there's this thing called proximate cause. All right, now y'all learning a lot of law here. Y'all learning a lot of law. But here, here's the trick, because y'all need to know this, because see, they think hey, all hell breaking loose now, all hell gonna break loose if he's found not guilty. And so Lawson, you just made a great argument on why he should be convicted of first degree murder. And their argument's gonna be, it, it's because of the drugs in his system. See, what they're going to do is they're going to tarnish him as some drug uh, addict that was with, right? And had he had not the drugs in the system, th he wouldn't have died. And so it's not me needing, putting my knee on the back of his neck that causes death. 
It's the drugs in the system that causes death. If he, if he didn't have any drugs in the system, I may be wrong for putting my knee on his neck. I, I, I understand that. But I can't be held liable because he's, he's got fentanyl and, and meth in his system. That's their defense. How you know that, Lawson? Because I fuck, I done told some of y'all new, newcomers because I done done these cases. Now I'm telling y'all, this is, you know, they charge a lot of lawyers and law professors charge a lot of money to be teaching y'all this stuff. It's free. You know why? Because part of my duties here in the Innocence Project here and, and just teaching criminal law is to be of community service. So this is this is my community service to all those so you don't get on the okie doke. Now listen, so that's what's called proximate cause, right? That's in other words, let's say um, I mean the, the fact is had um, Mr. Chauvin had, had Mr. Floyd not been born, right? Uh, he would never have been killed. I mean, you can take actual cause. That's like but for you can take actual cause all the way back to Adam and Eve if that's what you believe, right? Legal causation is proximate cause. Now, here's the argument that, that defeats what they're saying. When they come back and say, well, you know, uh, yeah, I had my knee on his neck, and I was wrong about that, but I didn't cause it. was his fentanyl. It was his meth. That's what generated the heart attack. Had he not taken that stuff, he would have he would have lived through it, right? And that doesn't matter. See, that's don't fall for that okie doke. See, when you're prosecuting, you can show, you have to show uh, pro what's called proximate cause. In other words, if I shoot you and you live and you go to the hospital and the doctor in there commits malpractice and misses the bullet and you end up dying, is it the doctor that caused your death or is it me? I shoot you. Now, listen, come on, students, get your pens and paper out. If I shoot you and you, you got wounded and you say, hey, man, and you go to the doctor, and the doctor in there and, and, and whatever, he, 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 he's, he's not really bright. You know, you have to, so he messes it up and you die. And so they charge me with killing you. I know you ain't going to be around here to try, but your family's there, right? So they charge me with killing you. And I say, hey, man, yeah, I shot him. <sighs> okay, but he would have lived had the doctor not messed up. Right? So, 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 the, am I guilty? Let me say, look, y'all, y'all, am I guilty? Some, some, some of y'all get up here and, and like, let me screen down. Am I guilty? Oh man, come on, y'all got. Or do I? Am I saying the doctors at fault? See, that's how they come in in the Floyd case. Then what they're gonna say is yeah, because they can't dispute what's on the tape. So you gotta concede that. You gotta say yeah, yeah, I'm on. I got my knee on his neck. Yeah, yeah. We should have rolled him over, but that's not what causes death. Well, what causes death? The meth and the fentanyl, right? So I'm giving you this example. If I shoot you, you go to the hospital, and then all of a sudden you could have been saved, but the doctor somehow messes up. Am I responsible for your death? And the law says, yeah, if, if what? If it's reasonably foreseeable that if I shoot you, that somehow it could be a mistake made between the time I shoot you and you get to the hospital while you're at the hospital, if that's foreseeable, then I'm still responsible for your death. The only thing that will cut that chain, the only thing that will disconnect me from the crime of shooting you is something that's just not foreseeable. And so now let's get back to this. And you learn a lot of law real quick, but I'm gonna get back. So what's the question that has to be asked? Is it reasonably foreseeable that a person that you're arresting on the street may have drugs in their system that you may not know about. And if you keep them in that prone position with your knee on the neck that you might kill them. Is that foreseeable? The answer is fuck yeah. <laughs> right? The answer is yeah, it's real foreseeable. You know why we know? Because Lane told you it was foreseeable when he said I'm concerned about excited delirium. You know how we know it's foreseeable? Not because what, because they told you. He said I'm concerned, look, right when man says I can't breathe while he's still living. And he's saying, I can't breathe, and, and it's crying for his mother. Lane tells you, turn it. I think we should turn him over because I'm concerned about excited. Lane's the other officer, right? On, on the, uh, I'm concerned about excited delivery. So it's foreseeable. At that point, you knew that there's something that could happen, and you continue to do it anyway. So my point is this. This little uh, report that they did, this little toxicology report I just showed you, right, where they say he got... Uh, 
uh, fentanyl and 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 um, meth in his system. Don't don't fall for the okie doke. Don't but see now now but here's what happens. Now I'm gonna tell you some some of my 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 uh, and, you know and to my white friends out there and friends that that are, you know of different colors other than black. Thank you for your support, and for those that's trying to learn, thank you. But it's gonna be somebody you get them white jurors, man. You can see what they see when they see us. Is they see uh, minister society. What they see when they see us is people whose lives aren't worthy. And so when you try a case like this to a white jury, you put the jury in that. What they'll do is they'll put the jury in a position. These officers risk their lives every day to protect people like you, ladies and gentlemen. The jury. And they may have made a mistake here, but it was done with the intention of, 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 of reducing crime. They do it every day, every day, in and out, day and night. They're, they're uh, fighting against uh, people that's resisting arrest, shooting bullets at them. And the, this prosecutor wants you to come in here and say, because they made a mistake this one time, that somehow their whole lives should be ruined. When they dedicated their whole lives to protecting the city and you and theirs, right? And so them white folks looking like, yeah. You know, when I look at it, the, the, the black guy did, he really, he was a drug dealer anyway, or, or using drugs anyway. And these guys, you know, even though they made a mistake, man, am I willing to say guilty and just ruin their life? See, that's what happened in Trayvon Martin. That's why they didn't indict the cops that killed John Crawford in, in, in Walmart in 2014 when he on a cell phone talking to his girlfriend walking around with a BB gun that Walmart sells as if he's going to buy it. And they ran in and shot him in less than 1.5 seconds and killed him. And then they, they then they went then they claimed they went to the grand jury. And what they did was they weighed that black man's worth. And so when we say all our black lives matter, we ain't talking all lives matter. We're talking about our lives because for years what y'all been telling us is you don't we don't your lives don't matter. When you look at that man's face when he has his knee on the back of Mr. Floyd's neck, what he's saying is I don't give a shit. Your life don't matter. And that's what we're seeing. And so when jurors are in there, and it's subtle, man. It is real subtle. They're not going to come out and say black guy, white guy, cops, good guy, blue versus them. But that's how they're going to put it in, right? From the time they start for a the jury, what's for a dollar? That's when you ask the jurors, can they be fair, right? Go look at Rodney King. Like I told y'all, man, I see the reason why. Look, man, the reason why L.A. went up in flames, because that was the first time. That was the first time. See, we've been telling y'all for years, man, they're beating us, they're using excessive force, and they're killing us, and they claim that somehow Richard Pryor, y'all go back to Richard Pryor's first album, one of his first albums, not his first, that nigga's crazy, back in the 70s. And he had, he had, he had, he did, a, he did a skit on getting stopped and pulled over by the police while he's trying to go out on a date. Okay? So, right? But all of Richard's jokes came from real experiences or at least experiences that he has seen in real life. It may not have happened to him, but, but he a witness, right? And so even going, and you got the same thing now. And, and, and so again, man, when Rodney King happened, we had been telling y'all the same thing. Richard been saying, right? That this is, and, no, it's not really, you guys are just making this up. Man, it may have, you know, knocked you over the head a couple of times, but you know, they're not doing what you, so now we got it on tape. Now for the first time, a man getting beat by the police with excessive force is on tape. And so there was no riots at first. Go back and look at You know, the, 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 the black folks were like, yeah, now we're going to get justice. We all was like, yeah, now, now, they, now they see, hey, look, let's let the system take its course. Yeah, now they're going to get him. We been, I, see, we told y'all. Now y'all got the tape. Go get them, judge. Go get them, jurors. Right? And then they still came back after watching that talking about not guilty. And it's like, oh, man. Right, and then that's when everything blew up. And so when we, so that's fast forward. Trayvon Martin, uh, uh, Eric Garner, uh, uh, Michael Brown, and Ferguson, hands up, still shot. Go to the grand jury, right? And in that case, I don't. I, this is another. Uh, the, the prosecutor lied and told him, you know, he didn't even give him the right law. And then he later tells him, you know, that he made it anyway. It's not, but they don't charge. So I'm telling y'all, man, that that's okie doke. So you got it, you got it right here. I, hey, I bring you the law wrong. Anybody got any questions before I go? Uh, yeah, and, and you know what though? See, 
Let me say this, man. Have, having practiced law and being a former drug addict myself, I'm telling you, it seems like the only time that the only time people that's getting killed like this in this position is when they're in custody of the police. You know what I mean? And so the fact that this person has drugs in their system, well, and they're gonna blame it on the drugs. But you know, you got people that go to the hospitals that go wacky. When I was in detox, man, my fuckers was going crazy up in there, including me, right? And so, you know, sometimes sometimes you gotta be a little restrained. But they ain't killing us. The only time it's happening is when the police is doing it. Now, my friend Terrence inboxed me a, a tape, and I'm I'm about to do some research on it. Uh, when when uh, when uh, a war hero had had the police choke him, man. So hey, like I said, don't fall for this stuff, man. See, they tell y'all this stuff, and and they think y'all don't know. So that's what I'm telling. That's what I'm telling. You, it's free. Law, hey, I'm gonna give you to you, but it, but you're gonna get it wrong. Now you want to learn law from me, you're gonna get it wrong, but you're gonna get it, right? Uh, not like the way they telling y'all, this is the appropriate charge. And you got some of these Negroes out here. I'm talking to my black family now. So, you know, white folks, put your fingers in ears. Y'all know what I'm talking about when I say Negroes. You got some of these Negroes out here. Well, that's the appropriate charge. And we're just glad. Hey, man, charge them the way you charge us. See, that's the, what this whole pan, that's what this whole uh, uprising is about. That's what this whole uprising is about. It's it, because... When you see them, them cops that, that pulled um, that black guy out, uh, the, the kids out of the car in Atlanta, they just got charged, right? They pulled them out of the car, talking about violating curfew. And th those of you remember when we had riots in Cincinnati, I had to sue the city of Cincinnati for curfew violations too, along with my uh, audience, right? Because they were doing the same thing, picking on black kids and, and letting the white kids go and, and not violate. But anyway, but they charged them cops. Right, and that's all we're asking for. Charge the cops to the maximum that you can under the law and under the facts. Prosecute them with the same fervor, with the same with the same passion that you prosecute the shit out of us. Send them to prison with the same type of sentences that you've given us. And when you do that, you ain't got to worry about us burning shit up, because that's all we're seeking is equal justice. But that ain't what we've been getting. And I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close with this because they keep trying to bring, when they talk about the icon black crime, y'all got to push back on that. Look, the, the Department of, the statistics from the Department of Justice tells you that it's all, with all races because we all live in segregated neighborhoods. So there's, there is a st statistics for white on white crime. There's more whites to kill more whites. There's more blacks to kill more blacks. There's more Latinos to kill, kill right? That's a down the line. But y'all don't hear that shit about that. Y'all only hear it about black on black. That's that okey dope. And like I said, that we, we are concerned about black on black crime. That's why we make sure that we have these people arrested, prosecuted, and sent to prison. So the system seems to be working well with us. Go look at the statistics of us in prison. So, so justice is, you know, crimes committed, justice is being served, but it ain't being served when it comes to law enforcement that are, that are criminals. That's the issue. As, and 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 all that. Well, you must because I'm saying this somehow. I'm anti-police. I'm anti-criminal. I mean, how 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 hard is this shit to figure out? I ain't anti-police. I'm anti-criminal. And if you happen to be wearing a badge and being a criminal, I'm anti-criminal. So what difference do it make what you got on? You can have uh, yeah, man. You can have, have on a, a Hugo Ball suit. I'm and, and, and CEO. I'm anti-criminal. So you can be walking around and, and tore up drawers and no shoes. If you're a criminal, you're a criminal. You know, and 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 some of y'all, uh, and um, oh man, and, and and again, it don't matter if it's, a lot of times it's black cops too. Y'all seen it with black cops in the land and snatched them black kids out of there. See, NWA was way ahead of their time, and when NWA say black cops showing out for the white cop. Hey man, hey see, I got mad at NWA. You know, a lot of you know, and then them high for looting, uh, NAACP. They shouldn't be cut. Hey, NWA, they were telling you motherfuckers straight from the. It was raw. It was like, look, this is what they doing to us. Now you may be Mr. Black man living out there in the suburb and going into your BMW every day, right? And then you want to lecture us on how we feel, and they bought it right to your ass, man. 
And then when they were saying fuck the police, it wasn't fuck all the police. It was fuck the police. Y'all know who they was talking about. But see, and, and just like those cold words that your president, uh, and that, man, that Trump used, thugs. You know what that's cold for? I'm going to show you. Go on my Facebook feed. When I showed a, 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 an image of whites looting and I put, look at these thugs, man, white folks went crazy on my feed. Yeah, see, they ain't got no problem with black folk, pictures of black folks looting and calling them thugs. That's normal. But you can't, that, they see the people on the, on the feed that's white stealing shit. But the problem was I was calling them thugs. So why was that causing a problem? Because that's the cold word for us. You ain't supposed to use, right? These are just boisterous kids out there taking advantage of a situation. All oh, boys would be boys. Yeah, see that that's the that's the double standard we're talking about. So hey, hey, so like I said, man, yeah, yeah, you know, all this shit is is you know is done repeatedly. And so you got a a, a piece of shit up there in Washington, DC that went head in this bunker. Now see when when the governor of Michigan, see when 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 them when them protesters that was on talking about man, I need my hair cut and, and my, my nails is getting bad, my, and they're like, man up the fucking government and they went up to her damn place uh the state capitol with guns and um, rocket launchers and shit like that talking about we patriots well where y'all at now where y'all at now patriots right they was they had signs this is tyranny for you to make us where i'm at where you at now in in, in this protest see that's different when they tell you that, th that this protest is violent, they don't mention, man, look, when you go back, let me tell y'all, I was talking to somebody last night. Look, if I told y'all that there was a protest in a neighborhood and, 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 and the store owners got upset and they started locking the, their doors and, and locking up and they got scared and they called the police and the police came and the protesters started throwing shit at the police. And the police end up uh, believing that they're in danger and they kill one of the protesters. Y'all say, you know, that that's messed up. But see, that's the Boston Massacre that led to the American, that was one of the things that led to the American Revolution. And the first person killed in the Boston Massacre was a black man named Crispus Attucks. See, those people that went in there and, and called the militia, that was, that was, the king's uh, a militia that came down there and killed and started shooting them protesters. The first man to die. Y'all heard Stevie Wonder say that song. The first man to die for this fucking country was a black man. Was a black man. And you don't believe me? Go look it up. And he died in a, in a protest that 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 was 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 not fucking peaceful. But they was tired of the tyranny. They telling y'all over. Look at them people. Look at them uh, uh, Chinese over in Hong Kong fighting for their freedoms. They burning shit up in Hong Kong, man. They burning stuff up. Or oh, they freedom fighters, right? They because because China's uh, communist China. Go turn on your and, and go watch. Go just Google uh, uh, Hong Kong protests or go on YouTube and just pull up some videos. Man, they tearing shit up. But see, our government saying that's freedom fighters. They want their freedom. Shit, so do I. They want justice over in, in Hong Kong. We support that. We don't support it there. But you can't have it both ways. So don't tell me that, that, that all this what's going on is wrong. Now, looting is wrong. I'm going to tell y'all, looting is wrong. But when you out there, and I've been out there, and some of y'all know what I'm talking about, and you got people instigating, you got some of these cops that are out there in plain clothes, and they've already planned with other cops in uniform, that when, we, when I'm going to be in the crowd, I'm going to start throwing shit at y'all, and that's going to give me an excuse to start beating the shit out of people. Y'all don't think that goes on. They was doing it in the 60s. They was doing it, and they're still doing it now. They got guys out there who are with the police in plain clothes, dressed like protesters. I'm not saying it happens all the time, but it happened enough in Cincinnati. Y'all know, don't, is anybody in Cincinnati on here? Do I got anybody in Cincinnati on here that was down there when we was down there in the protests and the riots and stuff like that? Right? Somebody, yeah, it's happening in Taiwan too. Right? And so you had a plain clothes officer. I ain't telling y'all something that I just made up in some conspiracy theory. We watched them do it. 
I put photographs up here of, of, of policemen in the current uh, protest pointing guns and shit at kids. They shot kids with rubber bullets in Cincinnati doing drive-bys. They being the, the police, and again, not all police. I'm, I'm, see, I make this caveat so y'all don't get off point. Not all police is bad. That way, you, that way the police is listening to this, y'all can stay focused. Because I ain't talking about all police. I'm talk, Y'all know who I'm talking about because y'all work with them. So don't, hey, don't, hey, don't, don't, look, all the stuff that's going on, you got, that's why I get, yeah, Kenny, you know, that's why I keep pushing back on, on my social media. And if, I swear to God, if I didn't have to teach my class to all these law students who are going to be out there fighting uh, the just fight for y'all, if I could just leave here, I can't leave them. But y'all know me, the, the, you know, like I said, man, people in Hawaii really don't know me that well. But, y'all, man, I'd be right out there. In those, I remember uh, Reverend Shuttlesworth that used to uh, march with Dr. King. And he used to train us in Cincinnati. And he would always tell me, he's like, man, you're the lawyer. You can't be in the streets with us. <laughs> you're like, you, when we, he, he said, he said, how are we going, how are you going to help us? And you sitting in jail next to us. <laughs> Rest in peace, Brother Shuttlesworth. But yeah, man, so, hey, all I'm saying is this. Don't push back on it. So, you know, come to my Facebook page. I'll do another live feed uh, when anything pops up. But, but again, when you watch your president, and you got to be careful because some of these people coming in there, uh, and hopefully uh, some of the, the, the uh, infiltrators will stop now, uh, and, and, you know, we can get on to the next phase of this. Uh, you know, and, but the protests continue. The protest has to continue. And yet they talk, you know, in one lap, there's so much that happened this week. And remember, they putting up that stuff about Dr. King. You know, I smoked that shit on my pad. What, what would Dr. King, if he was here, do if he was here? Right, he wouldn't approve of this. First of all, y'all don't know when Dr. King before he was killed, his views on nonviolent protests were kind of changing because they was beating the shit out of them in Chicago when they went on that march uh, with the garbage man. Yeah, see, y'all like to talk about Dr. King, but y'all don't study uh, civil rights. See, most of y'all talking about Dr. King don't know a fucking don't know nothing about civil rights. But when he went up there and took that same stuff from the south up to the north. And like Malcolm used to say, hey, man, at least down south, I know who my enemy is. Wolf is a wolf. But up here, you got them kind of, you know, that that smile on your face. And so when he went up there, his views started to change. But nevertheless, look at it. In in 1968, Dr. King was killed on April 4th, 1968. And, and And the whole United States went up in the riots. And people, yeah, and it was smoking. If you don't, if you're too young to remember that, just go Google it. And six days later, guess what? The 1968 Civil Rights Act was passed. Now, Dr. King walking around from 1964 to 1968, and they ain't do shit. Shit go up in flames, and it wasn't, you know, and and, and now it said, oh yeah, we can pass that Civil Rights Act that, that addresses fair housing. Right now, last week they didn't charge Chauvin. They weren't going to charge him immediately, right? Shit went up, he charged. So, again, like I said, I, I'm not for looting, but I ain't the one to turn the other cheek. And some of these young hey, that's, some of these young brothers, they ain't for turning the other cheek either. Now, they nonviolent with people that's non. And I was, when we marched, hey, I'm nonviolent with people that's nonviolent with me. But you want to shoot me and I haven't bothered you with a beanbag or something like that, it's going to be on. And see, that what they're going to rule today. You see, if the Black Panthers are still here doing the stuff that them, oh, them white patriots was doing up there, they, do you really think that if uh, enough Black Panthers and those that believed in, in, in civil, nonviolent, armed protests, do you think that that, that, that little uh, fake-ass uh, military operation that Trump did up there, you think they would have done that with a thousand black men standing out there peacefully protesting but armed to the fucking teeth? Legally protesting, but armed to the teeth. See, it's okay when they do it. And Matt, and you don't, y'all, y'all think I'm lying. It used to be legal in, in California to open and carry in the 60s. And the Black Panthers marched their ass straight to the, to the, to the uh, Capitol. Hey, man, they went, Huey and them went straight to the Capitol armed to the teeth. And them legislatures got busy changing that law, right? Cause that's their worst nightmare, seeing an armed, organized black man, right? But hey, like I said, 
See, if, if we say it now, all of a sudden everybody starts thinking, oh, yeah, you advocating violence. See how that shit works? Just by, there's some people on this feed over the last 10, five minutes that heard me just say that, and now I'm advocating violence. These motherfuckers don't want to get a haircut and don't want to put a mask on, but they, Trump said, hey, they, uh, the governor should come outside the, the mansion and meet with these people, they're nice people. His ass was hid in the bunker. Right? <laughs> This punk, look, this guy had a, def I, and, and before you, some of y'all on there, y'all don't like what I'm saying. I served in the military. My son served in the military, uh, in the Marines. My uh, grandfathers and uncles served in the military. So, hey, hey, I got the right to say what the fuck I want to say about this bullshit. He didn't serve shit. Now he want, he a punk and, and, and a bully. And he want to sit up there and direct armed forces to attack peaceful citizens to go touch a Bible he ain't never seen in a church he ain't never fucking walked in. All because he want to get paid back because he had to go run into the tunnel that night. Dang, he out there. See, that's what happened. And, 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 and so, you know, for all these guys walking around with bazookas and need to get your hair cut and y'all follow this punk, what does that say about y'all? I mean, really. What kind of leader you got that will go run in a fucking bunker from his own citizens outside protesting? I mean, I mean, who is this motherfucker, really? This is the cursing part of, of my my talk, my my free law class, right? And because I have a First Amendment right to say what the fuck I want to say, and and because I'm pissed off right now and I can't be on the mainland to be out there in the streets, I'm I'm taking it out <laughs> on my Facebook live. <laughs> Hey man, but that's what that's where we at. That's where we at. Well, you got a president that go run into the bunker, and then the next day, he gonna pre-plan and have that fat bar come out there. And I say, you know, I mean, he's a, I mean, I, I really wish. You know, here, here's what I'm trying to tell you. I don't care how much education a man has. I don't care how smart a man is. When you get down to the bare essence of it, really, what it comes down to is I'll whoop your ass. See, that's, that's what goes, I don't care if it's in the boardroom, I don't care if it's in the courtroom, I don't give a shit where it is, how much money you make, whatever. Whenever it comes down to it, down to the core of your soul, one man look at another man, and, and really what it comes down to, man, I'll whoop your ass. And, you know, when I look at Barr, when I look at Trump, and when I look at these punks taking advantage and thinking it's funny that they could sit uh, uh, the military with, with combat uh, uh, helicopters attacking their own peaceful citizens. I see some punk ass people, man. And then, like I said, some of these uh, patriots want to go around talking about Trump this and MAGA this and all that. Y'all ain't nothing but some bitches. And, hey, how do you follow a man like that? Gonna get gonna get deferments from the military. Everybody's gotta go to Vietnam, especially those of color and die. And then he want and hey, so, like I said, but he got mad because he hit in the bunker. And that's the first time any group of religious people came out and said you know what you you know don't use don't use god like that All right now and then he want to walk it back well i didn't know he was going to the church he's such a lying piece of shit and that leads me to my final point get your ass out and vote they can talk about COVID 19 because you know he's going to try not to let us do it by uh mail voting and I don't give a shit if you got to, if we got to, whatever you got to do, spray yourself with some Lysol, drink some fucking Clorox, you know, put some uh, light up your ass, whatever you got to do, take your ass out to vote. Because it ain't just about Trump. The reason why these Republicans are so silent is because while he out here creating that distraction, they are loading these courts with conservative judges. While he out here on the right hand, making y'all look, it's like a magician. While he over here making you look over here thinking this is where the trick is. Now the trick over here that you ain't looking at, the trick is I'm going to stack this court. That's why Mitch McConnell, and they happy as hell. So you got Justice Ginsburg and others up there holding on, man, to dear life, waiting on y'all. Y'all got to do y'all part. We all got to do our part. I mean, get your ass. I don't give a shit what they say about mail-in voting. If you got a, you get, we going to go to the polls. If we're going to work the polls and we got to get sick doing it, we're going to get sick doing it. Because you can see it coming. He's creating a situation to where he ain't going to want to leave. This is all building up to this vote. This is all building up to this vote. He keeps trying to, to, to re, retweet the same shit over and over again. Fraud, voter fraud, fraud, right? It's going to create that sensation. 
And so when November 3rd comes and he claim, hey, man, you know what? Uh, yeah, I know I just it showed that I got my ass beat, but uh, this is a fraud and I ain't going nowhere. And remember, he stayed president until January. He's still the commander in chief of the military. He, he told you what he was going to do with, with peaceful citizens. You know how many protests they have in Washington? You remember the, the Dr. King's protest in uh, 1963, the March on Washington, the Million Man March, the Million Women March? And this is the first time we had a president attack his citizens. You remember all them hippies that would go in the 60s? Cruz, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> all y'all hippies out, uh, you know, I'm young, you know, that, that's, uh, you know, my daddy and they was hippies. For some of y'all little slightly older hippies, y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all, you know, they weren't attacking y'all. So, like I said, like I got to go. Uh, I've been on here long enough, but you know, I, I you know, this is, I, you know, I'm venting. So, any questions before I go? Look, Willie Anderson laughing. Hey, Willie, did you see that that post from the uh, head coach of Denver Broncos, man, talking about ain't no racism in the NFL? I hear the head coach. They got a job that a black man supposed to have because, but they won't give a qualified black man, and, they, and they're qualified black NFL coaches in the NFL. But very few of them are head coaches. And he wants to sit there after what they did to Colin Kaepernick and other black men that tried to stand up by taking a knee. He's gonna say that this that there's no racial discrimination against black men with the police. That that, that Floyd is like an isolated case. And there's no uh, racism in the NFL. Now, how does man still keep his job? And, and, and if them black and white, if them black and white athletes don't come together and smoke his ass out of there, then then they get what they deserve. I mean, this whole NFL stuff, man, uh, I'm getting into another thing. All right, any, any other questions before I go? So, hey, like I said, man, now a lot of lawyers ain't going to tell y'all this. And some of these pundits that's on CNN, they ain't going to bring it wrong. But when they tell y'all this is a, the second degree is inappropriate, y'all send them a copy of this, this, you, this uh, uh, Facebook video. I'll put it on YouTube, too. But send them, hey, say, hey, look, man, that ain't what the law dog's saying. And have them come. If they ain't got a problem with it, have them come talk to me. I'll teach them, too. Shit. And I shouldn't have to teach those that taught me. All right, any, any questions real quick? See, I look for questions and I start ranting again. Marcus, somebody in, inboxed a question. Oh, okay. Hey, and for those in Atlanta, I have a friend who whose who's son, who, I have a friend who has was one of the black students that was arrested in the car. This is uh, in Atlanta that wrongfully by the police. And so we're looking for an attorney in Atlanta that does civil rights. So can somebody inbox me? Don't put it all on the damn Facebook feed. Just inbox me names of, of, of a black lawyer in, in Atlanta, in Atlanta, that does civil rights uh, for one of these young people that, 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 you know, I don't want to give out too much information because I don't want to put them on the spot, um, that can ha ha take one of these cases of these young kids that was uh, charged with violating curfew. All right. Oh, some, Sam, uh, Sam says that uh, President Obama is going to be live at 2 p.m. today. All right. Yeah, I'm going to watch it. Hey, Kathy. Kenneth Price. Can they still add first degree after further review? That's a good question, uh, Pastor Price. So, so the question is, can they still add first degree? Yeah. So what happens is once they get to the, so the case, right, they've just been charged. So you get charged with a crime, and, and they do a little report like this, right, book him down on They book your ass. They take you to jail. Then what happens? You go to arraignment like he did. Judges say, well, you know, you're getting a bond. The honor, I plead not guilty. Uh, I don't have a prior record. This is what your lawyer said. My client didn't have a prior, prior record. Uh, he works every day. Your honor, he's he's uh, innocent until proven guilty. We'd ask for a reasonable bond. My client says he thinks he can make $5,000. Then the judge set a bond. Showman's bond was 500 Then what happens to the case? Well, it can go to what they call a preliminary hearing. What's that, Lawson? That's where a judge will sit down. And the prosecutor has to show why he or she believes there's probable cause to believe what? That Chauvin committed a crime. What's that crime? Murder. Right? Uh, so there's probable cause to believe a murder was committed. How do we know that? Well, we got a man that's dead, Mr. Floyd, and we have a coroner's report that says it's a homicide. So there's probable cause to believe a murder was committed. 
and there's probable cause to believe that Chauvin's the person that committed that murder. So they can bring in witnesses. Yeah, Your Honor, we seen him on tape with his knee on the back of his neck, and the man died. Here's a coroner's report. Then the judge is sent it to the grand jury. Then the grand jury, at that point, Kenny Price, Kenneth Price, at that point, the grand jury can uh, and the prosecutor will go into the now the grand jury. For the I don't know, that's not the jury that you see on on Perry Mason, right? That's like that's that that is a petted jury. That's not that's not the jury. The grand jury is secret. The only people allowed in there is the prosecutor and the witnesses along with the grand jurors. The judge ain't in there. Ain't no judge in the grand jury. Uh, ain't, the defense lawyer is not allowed in there, period. And, and so the, the grand jury is secret. You don't know who the grand jurors are. So the prosecutor starts bringing in witnesses. And, and, and he, he or she will say, okay, Mr. Witness, tell them what you saw. So they may have had a 17-year-old girl. Well, I was walking out the store, and I, I saw this man, so I started taping. Is this an accurate copy? Did you tape it with it? Yeah, I took it with my iPhone and all this other stuff, right? Then they bring it in the office. And what you, then they bring in the corner, right? Then they, so now, after all the evidence has been presented to the grand jury, the prosecutor would tell the grand jury, here are the charges you can consider. You can consider first, if you find that this evidence, if there's probable, what's the grand jury looking at? Probable cause. Same thing that the judge looked at at the preliminary hearing. But now we're at the indictment phase. If you find there's probable cause, not beyond a reasonable doubt, Proof beyond a reasonable doubt is like way up here. I wish I could get to my blackboard. It's like way up here. Probable cause is way down here. You don't need a lot of evidence. You don't, uh, Chief Ernie McGowan, he's probably on his there. You don't need a lot of evidence. For pro just probable, it's probable. Probably you, you did it. Not, not beyond a reasonable doubt. So is there probable cause to believe that he committed first degree murder? And so if we go back to um, my little slideshow here, and I turn it over here, right? We've already talked about that. Yeah, that's probable cause to believe that he did it because they, he had been warned twice, once when he, at six minutes, I mean, uh, right when it happened, that the man should be turned over. He said, no, I'm gonna leave him in this position. Then he was warned that he had no pulse and he wasn't breathing and he kept his knee on his neck for two minutes and 53 seconds. So yeah, he knew that, that there's probable cause to believe that you caused the death of a human being, Mr. Floyd, with premeditation. You, you knew what you was doing. You thought about it, and instead of getting off, you said, no, I'm going to leave him right here with the intent to affect his death. What other reason, if the man ain't breathing no more, if the man ain't got no pulse, what other reason would you leave your knee on the back of his neck? For what? You got two officers telling you he could be dying. The, 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 everybody around watching him die telling you, officer, you're killing him. And you stay there after you know you ain't got no pulse for two minutes and 53 seconds. What else is your intent? It ain't just securing because he's already secured. How do we know that? Because they're telling you he ain't moving. This is why I say that's some bullshit. Man, man, everything, that, that, that second degree murder is some bullshit. And y'all can sit there and say, well, Lawson, you know, the pundits on CNN and Keith Ellison. Man, Keith Ellison denied. Keith Ellison is a Muslim. And when they started asking him about Minister Farrakhan, because he know that most people don't like Farrakhan, he denied his own leader. Now, I don't agree with everything Minister Farrakhan, but I'd be damned if I denied him as a black leader in the community. Now, that's what, some of y'all don't like that. So, hey, but again, we determine who our leaders are, you know? And so it, there are a lot. Al Sharpton, I'm, I marched with Al Sharpton. I'm, I marched with the president of NAACP. Um, Farrakhan, not Farrakhan didn't march, but I, you know, uh, met him a couple of times. But anyway, man, my point is this. When Keith Ellison get up there and tell y'all that shit, they, he full of shit. What he trying to do is, and, and here's the danger of it. See, when only you charge, look, look, listen to me now. If you only charge with this second degree murder, if you only charge, this is second degree. If you only charge with this, so the jury starts out with this. This is important. So now the, the biggest charge, let me turn it back to me. The biggest charge is second degree murder. So if I'm a defense lawyer and, and, and we go on second degree murder, I'm going to ask for manslaughter. And so now if the jury can't find me guilty of second degree murder, they're going to find me guilty of manslaughter. That's what I'm hoping for, or negligent homicide. And so if you start low, you could end up even lower. That's the danger. Because you're going to have, I'm telling y'all, man, yeah, go on y'all Facebook feeds and, and just look at some of the comments. You got people on here that, that don't want, that believe the officers may have been justified. And then you're going to have some of them on that jury. 
So you got to know, again, you should start at the, if you can prove it, and I think they can, start at first degree. And don't give them a chance to get out for manslaughter or some type of negligent homicide. All right, I'm out now. I'm done. I'm, I'm tired. My hair, look, my afro growing slowly and messily, but I can't, I, they won't open a barbershop. All right, so I'm out.